what are your thoughts on maybe the top three or top five ways to improve mitochondrial health and the, and the <clears throat> sort of robustness of that system? Well, I'm talking to an expert on mitochondria right now, but uh, I've started doing in the past uh, year and a half a mitochondrial health series. So I've had experts on my podcast every week talking about mitochondrial health and, and I'm collecting, you know, little bits of information from all of them and, and doing my own research, but I've sort of distilled it into, you know, several key things that have been scientifically proven to improve or support the mitochondria in a different way. So the first one is doing fasted workouts. That's been, you know, scientifically proven to enhance mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the genesis of, you know, new mitochondria, which is a big part of maintaining good, healthy mitochondria, well-functioning mitochondria is, you know, it's making sure that they're able to replicate themselves. And because mitochondria have their own DNA that is separate, they can replicate themselves and make more of themselves within different tissues. So, um, you know, doing exercise, doing movement is probably, you know, one of the biggest factors on how much mitochondria you have, but doing fasted workouts has been shown to, to, you know, improve it even more. But one of the things that I really found interesting, and I've, I've done a couple of podcasts about this is there's actually research showing that if you are in a ketogenic state or you are eating a higher protein diet, that you actually can get mitochondrial biogenesis, even if you are not completely fasted. And there's a, a few different reasons why I think that can potentially occur. And so for people who don't necessarily want to do fasted exercise, there's other ways to improve mitochondrial biogenesis. Uh, intermittent fasting is the second one because, you know, you're really you're able to do that fasted movement or fasted exercise if you want to within that window. Um, but for a lot of people it also induces a state of keto ketogenesis or ketosis. And that has some effects on the mitochondria that we've identified. So it can help the mitochondria uncouple. So the mitochondria can uncouple heat production from energy production. And it can also, it, it also has certain signaling properties uh, with regards to epigenetics that I won't get into here, but, um, being in a mild state or a deeper state of ketosis can have, you know, some positive effects on, on the mitochondria, but I think there's probably other reasons that you probably know better than I do why, um, intermittent fasting is good for the mitochondria. But, you know, I think there's probably an aspect of mitophagy there, or even doing, you know, longer extended fasting, um, that helps you to, you know, get rid of some of the, uh, my, uh, mitochondria that are not functioning as well. Um, doing a ketogenic diet. I know you're not a huge fan of ketogenic diets. I'm not in a, a big, you know, nutrition dogma person. Um, I like all different approaches as long as protein is prioritized, but I tend to do more of a ketogenic style approach in the winter time. It just aligns with where we live because I eat seasonally and locally and I'm in Northern Europe. So that's, it works out really well. And then in the summertime, I do more of a local seasonal approach, which has uh, more carbohydrates in it. But uh, keto is really interesting because again, you know, it's a fasting mimetic and, you know, it, it activates AMPK, a lot of different pathways that are similar to being fasted. And so has similar, you know, potential effects, uh, autophagy, mitophagy. Uh, and also when you metabolize fat, there's a couple of really interesting things. Um, so with, with regards to the mitochondria, the first is that fat generates way more ATP, uh, than glucose or amino acids. So more than twice as much, I think you get like over a hundred ATP from, uh, metabolizing fat, uh, and making, um, per, in the per, TCA cycle per gram. Program, yes. Uh, and then with pyruvate or with amino acids or with glucose, um, it's like 40 ish or so. So it's more than double um, the amount of ATP. But a really interesting thing as well is that uh, you sort of enter the electron transport chain one step ahead. And so the electron tunneling is more rapid as well. Uh, so you're producing ATP a little bit more efficiently as well as making more of it. So um, I think it's one of the reasons that it's important to be metabolically flexible and be able to, you know, burn fat as well as, as glucose. Uh, and so the last couple are red light therapy. I'm a huge fan of red light therapy because it supports our mitochondria in making ATP, also making metabolic water. 
uh, at cytochrome C oxidase. And these chromovores, chromovores <laughs> that absorb red light, I think are absolutely fascinating. And there's a lot of different mechanisms through which you know, they're supporting the mitochondria, you know, with regards to nitric oxide and, and other things. But I just think that everyone should be getting some red light therapy, whether it's naturally through exposure to sunrise and sunset every day, or through owning some high quality, high powered red light panels and doing it, you know, in the comfort of their home. Um, I think also sauna therapy, you know, if it's a far infrared, um, that's been shown to have a lot of benefits. Um, as well, but I'm, I don't know as much about sauna therapy. I'm still learning. Um, but I do know that it has an amazing impact on the exclusion zone water, um, in our cells. So, um, the last couple of things are cold therapy, uh, because you activate brown fat, or you can make white adipose more beige or more brown. And when they're more beige or brown, they have a higher, number of mitochondria, so greater mitochondrial density. So that is a form of mitochondrial biogenesis as well, uh, doing cold therapy. So I'm a huge fan of cold plunges and, you know, just embracing the cold, <laughs> like getting cold, not being afraid of, of getting cold and understanding the value that it adds, especially when uh, ancestrally, perhaps you were meant to get cold, you know, at certain times of the year, as opposed to, you know, trying to be warm and comfortable uh, all the time, which we tend to do in our modern environments. Um, and the last um, is really prioritizing rest and recovery. And that's something that I talk about often on the podcast is, you know, we talk about fasted exercise and like all these hormetic stressors and, and metabolic adaptations. And it's so important to do things like, you know, resistance training and things that challenge your body. But if you don't rest and recuperate, you won't get the metabolic adaptations and really interesting research done by Dr. Mark Matson showed the, the adaptations happen in the rest. They don't happen during the stimulus there. The stimulus happens, but you have to rest. So you have to prioritize sleep and good quality sleep, uh, which is also when we get, you know, all of that amazing antioxidant mitochondrial repair from melatonin, but uh, you also have to nourish your body really well. And there's actually really interestingly, some foods and supplements that can help. Um, I've, I've found some, uh, some foods, uh, like turmeric, um, goat cheese and goat milk and MCT containing products, uh, can signal to the mitochondria to uncouple, uh, dark chocolate, vitamin C, um, are a couple others that are less well-known, but have been shown to, to support the mitochondria. Hey, this is Ari. And if you enjoyed this little clip, I highly recommend checking out the full length podcast by clicking the link down below this video in the description, check it out. You're going to learn a ton more valuable information. Also, as always, I want to mention at the energy blueprint, we offer a ton of solutions to help you increase your energy and as a side effect, help you prevent disease, dramatically improve your brain function, your mood, combating anxiety and depression, increasing your resilience to stress and increasing your longevity. All nice bonuses to strategies designed to massively increase your mitochondrial function and your energy levels. And we've got a whole suite of products, uh, online info products that guide you on strategies to optimize your lifestyle and nutrition habits. Uh, we've got an eat for energy course. We've got a brain course. We've got an advanced fat loss strategies course. We've got a breathing for energy course, which I highly, highly recommend. Uh, people just absolutely rave about that one in particular. And we've got a whole suite of supplements, uh, mitochondrial formula, a brain formula, energy essentials and superfoods, which is our comprehensive multivitamin and multimineral and superfoods formula. So. Thank you for watching this again, full length, uh, link to the full length podcast is down below and, uh, check out the energy blueprint.com for our whole suite of products that can help you dramatically transform your energy levels.